It's January 8th, 2000. We're at Adelphia Coliseum in Nashville, Tennessee. Having just taken a one point lead, the Buffalo Bills are kicking off and hoping that 16 seconds won't be enough time for the Titans to score. It's a reasonable hope. This wildcard matchup has been a defensive slugfest where points have been at a premium and all sorts of other gridiron cliches. So it'd be asking a lot for Tennessee to pull this out. But as they gather the kick, they're far from ready for their incredible season to end. And what comes next will make us forget that there is even a game leading up to this moment. So let's rewind. Look at this cluster of Titans. If you are in need of some late game heroics, this is not exactly what you would draw up. So let's celebrate Tennessee while we can. For the last three seasons, this team had been the picture of mediocrity. As the Houston Oilers became the Tennessee Oilers, they remained constant in their eight and eight ways. But after they fled Houston, they became wanderers of Western Tennessee, searching for some permanency, and along with it, a home field advantage. In 1998, they missed the playoffs, in part due to the five games lost in front of their quote unquote home crowd at Vanderbilt Stadium. Three of which were one score games, and had they won two of those, it would have guaranteed them a playoff spot. The pressure was turned up and it was felt by everyone, from the players to the front office. GM Floyd Reese admitted that there wasn't a lot of wiggle room. The team hadn't won a playoff game since the 91 season. Hell, they didn't even have an appearance since their franchise cornerstones Steve McNair and Eddie George joined the team. But 1999 offered a fresh start. They opened up the Adelphia Coliseum, started going by the Titans, and got a new defensive piece that completely wrecked shop. Javon Kurse came to Nashville as a first round pick and immediately helped alleviate that pressure by causing some of his own. He was the NFL Defensive Rookie of the Month for September, November, and December, and was voted to start in the Pro Bowl. That meant the defense finally had a wrecking ball to match that of the offense. George once again cruised, this time setting career highs in yards from scrimmage and touchdowns. And with an actual dedicated fan base that sold out every home game, they were unstoppable at the Coliseum. That included a week 16 dismantling of Jacksonville, the kings of the league that year. Tennessee gave them their only two losses on the season, and the Titans set a new franchise best record at 13 and three. Unfortunately, since no one else could beat the Jags, that meant the Titans could only claim a wildcard spot. And now, playing host in the stadium where they've never lost, that's looking to change in the most painful of ways. It hurts extra because at halftime, it felt like the Titans had this thing practically wrapped up. But clearly, they've duffed it. During a scoreless first quarter, the team swapped three and outs, the Bills had a turnover, the Titans had a missed field goal. It was not the prettiest football. But at the start of the second quarter, Curse found a way to profit from the ugly play. On second and six, he sacked the retreating Rob Johnson in the end zone, forcing a fumble that bounced out the back and gave Tennessee a 2-0 lead. On the ensuing free kick, Titans receiver Derek Mason took the ball from the 30, returned at 42 yards, and set his team up in scoring position at the Buffalo 28. After three straight runs by George, McNair kept it himself from the one yard line, found the corner, and extended the Titans' lead. The score held at 9-0 until just before halftime. After defensive holding negated a 45-yard miss, Al Del Greco hit from 40 and gave Tennessee a 12-0 lead. Considering their defense had kept the Bills to 65 total yards of offense in the first half, there was reason to be optimistic. Or there had been. Now with 16 seconds left and the Bills kicking off, the Titans need some magic. Granted, if they do lose here, at least it's to the Buffalo Bills, a team synonymous with playoff contender. But today's Buffalo team, one point lead and all, they're out in front despite just a touch of drama. Remember that quarterback curse sacked for a safety? So he wasn't the guy that led them here. The credit for that goes to Doug Flutie, who has hung out on the sideline today in full health. After eight seasons in the CFL, Flutie returned stateside, signing with the Bills in early 1998. But as the team tried to quickly distance themselves from the Todd Collins experiment and find success in a post-Jim Kelly world, a few weeks after Flutie signed, he was relegated to backup duty. They sent a first and a fourth to Jacksonville for Rob Johnson, a man with one career start in three seasons. 
but it was good enough to be wanted. He was immediately named the starter and given a $25 million contract. That would be the high point of his season. Once the games began, it wasn't great. The first three weeks all ended in defeat, and he got battered, taking 17 sacks combined during Buffalo's second and third games. And after getting a win in week five, he was knocked out of the following game from a sack on just the third play. This finally opened the door for Flutie, who led the Bills to a come from behind win against the Colts, which included 24 unanswered. After three more victories, Flutie was finally named the starter. He took Buffalo into the playoffs with a 10 and six record, was named the NFL's comeback player of the year, but by the following training camp, all it earned him was the label of co-number one with Johnson. Flutie was eventually announced as the starter, but not until just before week one. And while he didn't have quite as magical of a season, Flutie did put together a 10 and five record that locked Buffalo into a playoff spot. He got a big boost from the defense. They not only led the league in fewest yards allowed, but gave up more than six points less per game than they had a year ago. Flutie had veterans all around him, including some living legends who many expected were making a final playoff push to cap off their careers. While his season was somewhat derailed by injuries, Thurman Thomas was still a force at running back and became a much appreciated leader in the locker room. Their league leading defense was anchored by Bruce Smith. Now 36, the defensive end continued to pile up sacks, but made it clear his absurd career was still missing something. And then there was Andre Reed. For a moment, it looked like Flutie would lose one of his safety valves coming into the season, but the receiver came to an agreement with Buffalo and put together a solid 15th year. As they headed into their final regular season game though, many expected to soon say farewell to the legendary Bill. And then week 17 happened. On paper, it was great. Buffalo held the 13-2 Colts to just six points. They gained some more momentum heading into the playoffs, and Flutie got some rest as Johnson came in to play an essentially meaningless game. But then with the wildcard game looming, head coach Wade Phillips decided to make a QB change and actually roll with Johnson. It was met by just a bit of criticism, which even Buffalo GM John Butler acknowledged but he added that talent just oozed out of Johnson and that the head coach had seen that in practice every day. I suppose just not enough talent had oozed from him to dethrone Flutie during the regular season. Few supported the move given the circumstances and the quarterback who had worked so hard to get to this point didn't hide his frustration. For the Bills, they were just hoping for a change in fortune. While they had missed just two of the last 12 postseasons, the success that previously eluded them in the cruelest of ways was now rarely even flirting with them. It was a move to hopefully capture a magic similar to what propelled them past this very franchise earlier this decade in arguably the greatest comeback in NFL postseason history. And as you now know, it's worked. How though? It obviously didn't start great. Johnson has arguably been bad, and yet we're here. Bills up one with 16 seconds left. After being shut out in the first half, Buffalo got an immediate spark in the third quarter. Smith went right tackle on the very first snap, cut back to the left and rattled off a quick 44 yard gain that ended in the red zone. A few plays later and Smith powered through to put Buffalo on the board. He'd do it again from one yard out at the start of the fourth quarter, which gave the Bills a one point lead, but a failed two point conversion kept the score at 13-12. After trading punts, Tennessee got the ball back with 6.15 remaining. They used nine plays to go 27 yards, forced Buffalo to use their last two timeouts, and Del Greco connected from 36 yards out to put the Titans up two. So with 1.41 left, the Bills took over. Johnson had a chance to prove Phillips right in giving him the start. And with no timeouts, Johnson did just that. With the clock ticking, he capped off the drive by escaping the pressure and finding peerless Price near the right sideline. Price shook off his tackler and made it out of bounds. What's even wilder is Johnson did this with just one shoe on, having lost at a play before. In field goal range and with 20 seconds left, Phillips had seen enough. He sent out Steve Christie for the 41 yard field goal attempt and Buffalo's kicking woes of the past remained behind them. And nothing's changed between then and now. 
16 seconds left, Buffalo kicking off, and the Titans running out of hope. But as they prepare to go for broke, we need to look at the miracle workers on the field for Tennessee. Among others, we've got Frank Wycheck, Kevin Dyson, and catching the ball here, Lorenzo Neal. Neal's a newcomer to the team, but an immediately key piece. He stepped in and in front of George, clearing the way during another Pro Bowl season for the running back. As for Wycheck, he was McNair's favorite target during the season and the team's leading pass catcher. He'd even gotten to show off his arm in week 15 when he threw a 61-yard touchdown pass to Isaac Bird. And then there's Dyson, the former first-round pick that the Titans selected over Randy Moss, the second-year player that coaches had hoped would step up during the regular season. But after a monster week one, he almost completely disappeared, including a three-week stretch of single-digit yardage games. Realistically, he shouldn't even be on the field. Not because up to this point he's been somewhat of a disappointment, but more so since that spot normally would go to Derek Mason. Mason had won the return duties leading up to the season, but partially due to a lack of competition. In their season preview, ESPN had little hope for Tennessee's special teams unit, guessing that they were due for a return touchdown since they hadn't had one in five years. That wasn't setting the bar too high, but Mason managed to clear it. He not only took a punt back for a score in week 12, but became the first player to have over 1,000 return yards for the franchise since they left Texas. And now, when his team needs their best return man, Mason's on the sideline after an earlier injury. Like McNair and George, he's left to watch with the rest of the Titans as their incredible run comes down to this. In Mason's place is a receiver who has never returned a kick of any sort in his short NFL career. It's possibly the final 16 seconds of Tennessee's season, in front of their new home crowd that has backed them the whole way. For Buffalo, this could start a new chapter and prove the franchise is capable of finding a fresh identity after the letdown that was the 90s. To do that, they just have to keep Neal, Wycheck, and Dyson contained and hope the clock can hit zeros without the score changing. No one knows what's to come with this return but no one will forget this when it's over. Welcome to a moment in history. Renzo Neal at the 25, yeah, give pitches it, to... it back to Wycheck. He throws it across the field to Dyson. He's got something. 30, He's 40, got something. 50, He's got 40, it. 40, He's got 40, it. 20, 10, He's got 5, it. end zone. Touchdown Titans. Tennessee has pulled a miracle. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to relive what happened to the Titans later in these same playoffs, check out this rewinder. And don't forget to subscribe to SB Nation, and if you want to, you can hit the bell for notifications, and I mean, I, I would just really appreciate it.